dear colleagues, abdominal aortic stenosis, a disease of smoking women, you will see. Yes, men suffer more often from aortoiliac disease, we just have a case, and women suffer rather from isolated aortic stenosis or even occlusion, often underdiagnosed. And both genders are normally with these disease also smokers. Yes, surgery of aortoiliac lesions, yes, a five pat year patency rate is fairly good with 90% in that range. Complication rate is about 10%, mortality is 3 to 4%. And you see how it looks like, yes. Here you see one of these complications that is, yes, and hernia. Incidence is 11%. I think it will increase when we operate on the very obese people. Complication rate, recurrence rate, as you see. And the other post-surgical complication is adhesions. As you see it in this picture, you know that some have also problems then with their bowel. So open versus endovascular. Yes, when you have pulseless arteries due to the tight stenosis of the aorta, then it's sometimes helpful to use an ultrasound-guided needle to puncture the femoral artery, but it's not always necessary. Yes, what is when we pass these stenosis of the aorta and do a ballooning simply? That has the disadvantage of elastic recoil, risk of embolization, it's not effective in calcification, and you can even rupture the aorta. When we use uncovered stents, that prevents elastic recoil, but it does not prevent embolization, that can still happen, and you have no solution when you rupture the aorta. Therefore, an endograft is much a better choice because when you have a severe aortic disease, there often also some lumbar arteries are already gone, and therefore you prevent embolization, and uh, these are balloon expandable stent grafts, so you see what is the advantage. Yes, you isolate the plaque material with your device. You see how it is. We like to work with the Bentley peak graft, but you have also to be familiar with that because when you balloon it, it is shortened. So you have to know how to place it uh, to cover the lesion. Yes, renal retention. That is a patient, female patient, 61 years old. She has renal retention. And you see on the slide of the right side, yes, there is a drainage in both the renal uh, from the pelvis down to the bladder. And you see these eccentric calcified stenosis. And then, yes, you need a good measurement uh, to make a good choice also of these infrarenal uh, stenosis. Yes, uh, to have a good choice of the uh, B graft and uh, also the balloon. And you see here now we are in. In place and we do the implantation of the peak graft and the stenosis is removed. Le Risch syndrome in that patient, yes, with severely calcified infrarenal uh, artery, iliac arteries are slim due to the stenosis. There's also disease of the internal iliacs. Yes, and you see when we place our peak graft, yes, we have now a normal diameter, much better filling of the iliac arteries, and you see also now a better contrasting of the internal iliac arteries. And here again a case, yes, you see a 70-year-old lady with these stenosis uh, between the renal arteries and the bifurcation, and after ballooning, it's gone also with a Bentley Beecraft. That is a 50-year-old lady, naturally again smoker, 
also implantation of a B-graft normal diameter. That can be a problem when the stenosis is very close to the bifurcation, because when you balloon it there, you will remove the stenosis, but you can also rupture because part of it will be in the common iliac artery, and when you pull that out to 20 millimeters or more, then you can rupture the common iliac artery. Therefore, in these cases, I use a different technique. Yes, I place at the right level the uh, graft, but I don't open it completely. I only open it so far that it's fixed in the stenosis, and then I deflate the balloon, bring it a little bit up, so the balloon is not going into the common iliac artery anymore, and then I can balloon it completely. You see it here, yes, yeah? the balloon is... Uh, you see the narrowing there, the stenosis, and then afterwards, in that manner, we could then remove the stenosis completely with a good position also of the Bentley graft. So, the results. <coughs> Follow-up of uh, nearly two years here on a mean. And you see, yes, we had 76% women and 24% men. So, there is a dominant of the female gender. Youngest patient, as you have seen, 47 years, so fairly young for, for such a disease. Yeah, when we look at that, technical success rate was very high, 100%. We were able to remove all the synodes and we had no rupture, mortality, recurrent synodes. The advantage of these Bentley devices that even when you rupture it, it is sealed by the endograft. Yeah, so I can summarize the results. Three quarters of our patients are female, all patients were smoker. Treatment with a stiff and strong endograft delivers good long-term results. We have no recurrency up to now, up to four years. Thank you very much. So, thank you, Dr. Matthias. Questions, comments? How, what is the length of the B-graft uh, which uh, you use? Uh, I mean, uh, because usually it's... Uh, yes, when it's 40 uh -huh. and you, you balloon it up, it shortens. So. Yes. Therefore, you have to place it very exactly. It's not suited for long lesions. Yes? You have seen these are all short lesions, about one to two centimeters in length. Otherwise, you need two Bentleys overlapping, yes. that's also, a, or you use something else, yes? We have also other devices you see just in that case, which is a live case here, that then you can also use, and yes. Because my usual strategy in Bentley is to use uh, half to one centimeter above and below, just because I'm always afraid of this sh shortening, foreshortening of the Bentley stent yes. and, uh, okay. Stop smoking after this procedure, do you know? <laughs> yeah, that is a very good question, but uh, as you know, that is difficult even when you can convince them. I always tell them I was also a smoker, and uh, I stopped it successfully. At that, I was 12 years old, and I smoked behind a bush, because otherwise you would have <laughs> got a, a clap, yes? <laughs> But as you know, these, uh, some of the patients really achieve it, but it's a, a small number. Some only have yes, a, a time lap where they do not smoke, and then they, they start again. have recurrent disease because they have no complaints anymore, so oh, I can go on smoking. Thank you. Okay, so thank you.